Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's get him on here. Uh, where is my thing? Here it is, and boom. Hello, Nappy of Main 6. How are you doing? Hello, hello. I'm doing quite all right. It's nice to be here. Awesome, awesome. And in case people don't know, uh, what is your role on the Main 6 team, uh, Nappy? Uh, I'm the combat designer and animation director. Basically, all the stuff you see in the game and all the mechanics Dang. involved, that's that's all me. It's my fault. Dang. <laughs> all right, well... First of all, first of all, I'm just going to say this, that since you said you're an animation director, I want to say, and uh, I just think that Them's Fighting Herds is probably one of the prettiest fighting games that I've seen, you know, animation wise, you know, I, people were telling me about like how, you know, I, I think it was like Palm's eyes, you know, to keep darting around and everything like that. Yeah, and it's like based on a randomizer, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, but not only that, but I just also want to say that. Them's fighting herds as a fighting game, the way the characters pop from the background and the way that their animations are very perceivable by, you know, just your eyes and everything that you can see what they're doing, I think is really top notch. I think it's probably one of the best that I've seen in, you know, 2D animated fighting games. And I just wanted to say yeah. that. That's all. That no point oh, just saying many that. Thanks, dude. I just wanted to compliment yeah, yeah. on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of those little points have always been uh, really important to us. Uh, clarity of the viewer is super important, but also as the player, you got to know what you just got hit by and how far apart characters are and all their attacks and all that stuff. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. Yeah, I got I so I played it against people online for the first time today. I, I had a lot of fun. I'm playing Velvet because she's the annoying zoner and the game even says that she's a good choice. Jerk. So I I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. playing the character as the jerk, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's definitely me. And I played against, turns out, one of the best uh, Tianghua players in the world, I guess. Somebody who <laughs> people think could make Evo. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that dude's lurking around all of our lobbies, just uh, waiting to strike. It was a lot of fun. And and what just what made me think about it was James mentioned the animations and how I went from starting never having played against that character or gone into training mode with it at all. And I felt like right away, like... I knew what was happening. I was getting killed. Like, the mix-ups, the space... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, but, like, I could see what was happening in a way that I think, you know, typically does take me longer in other games, now that I think about it. Yeah. So, nice work. Anyway, I had a lot many of... Many thanks, many thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here to butter you up. Uh, instead, we'd like to talk about EVO Online and how the game and scene is sort of reacting to it. But before we get to that, I think it'd be nice if you told us about your story of getting involved with the game and how it all sort of came to be. Man, uh, this game's gone through many forms over the <laughs> past... Oh, God. It's like 10 years now. Uh, it started out as just a, a simple fan project for My Little Pony. Right. Uh, a, a lot of you know the story, but like those of you joining us now, this was just a simple fan game. Uh, we loved the show. A lot of people do just artwork. Some people did music. There were some other like game developers like making like kart races and fun little things like that. Uh, we wanted to bring people into the fighting game kind of community because that's the genre we love. Um, I was one of the first members on the team. I was I, j I originally joined just to be an animator, but I had a ton of ideas that I I just kept pushing and kept pushing. Eventually, I got my hands on the tools myself, learned it, um, put together a couple simple tests for our characters in Fighter Maker, and we kind of <laughs> hopped off from there. Uh, our original video was just one character with one move that just <laughs> wall bounced over and over again. <laughs> we put it up, we thought it was pretty silly. We woke up, it had like 500,000 or something views, something crazy like that, and we're like, I think this is, I think this might be a thing. We should probably take this way more seriously than uh, we were going to, uh, though in all honesty, I was, I was always super serious. Like, if, if I'm, if I'm going to hop into anything involving fighting games, I, I want it to be as good as possible, no matter what kind of cutesy package is involved. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, I was just about to say, uh, kind of jumping ahead a little bit, uh, if you don't mind, uh, 
this game really kind of does, I mean, you were talking about like the history. It has a lot of kind of like blessed history, right? Because obviously... Blessed and cursed for sure, yeah. (laughs) Because I know that, for example, you know, Hasbro eventually did do the cease and desist, which, you know, everybody was probably expecting kind of to happen. But then, I mean, talk to me what it was like being able to work, you know, tell me the story about Lauren Faust her involvement and how you guys felt about having her getting involved. Yeah. So when the, the hammer of Dawn came down from, from Hasbro, uh, of course, everyone was just kind of, you know, we were fully defeated that there's not much you can really do in that kind of situation. It happens to van games all the time. You get a little too big, you go too far, you're too visible, you get blown up, you move on to another project. Like, as we were climbing out of the the debris, <laughs> Lauren Faust, the creator of the TV show that we were making a fan game of, gave us an offer on Twitter. It, I still can't believe it actually happened, but she was 100% serious. Uh, she was following the project. A bunch of the animators on the show were following the project. They were thinking that some of the other animators on the show were working on the game with us. Like, it was crazy Dang. but she offered she offered her help and we of course accepted it we we wanted to see how far this kind of thing would go and she made us a whole new universe new characters all kinds of cool stuff and we kept going we just kept going no matter what obstacles came up we just kept going so so how much of the characters' personalities and, and you know, because obviously the characters have very distinct personalities. It's fantastic. I mean, Paprika makes me laugh yeah. just like like every time I'm messing with that. How much of that was Lauren Faust? Uh, it, oh, a lot of it was Lauren Faust. She, she has a ton of experience. She made a bunch of shows that we liked growing up or mm-hmm. at least worked on them. So she knew how to kind of make these characters very distinct. Uh not, not not just from each other, but also from the characters on the show that inspired us in the first place. You, they still kind of fit similar archetypes, but it was important that we make it a point to start a new universe with mm-hmm. new characters and make them characters that a new kind of crowd could enjoy as well. Awesome, awesome. Um... Now, this is probably a question that you may not be able to answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. (laughs) Um, uh, Sure thing. Are you, uh, are there plans for new characters? And if there are, is she still involved with designing some of these new characters? Uh, Yeah, we, oh, we had a whole roster planned out for the previous game. So I have a bunch of uh, fighting game, just mechanics set aside, ready to go. Uh, during our crowdfund, uh, we hit a stretch goal that uh, that funded one extra character and their story mode. Okay. And that character is a goat. Okay. <laughs> uh, the only yeah, the only information that's available on her is that she can uh, like climb walls and stuff like that because goats goats have what? ridiculous balance. <laughs> that's great. So we can kind of play around with that idea and kind of have fun with it. Sick. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of a. Uh, of grapplers so like there are types of characters that i want to get to eventually okay uh i i actively want to keep making more characters okay. it, all of oh, it well. depends on how far we go past this point but for now we have at least the goat coming and <laughs> we'll see how people will like it from there the goat that's great yeah the goat <laughs> oh, man. all right so well, Did you uh, find out? I don't know if you can. Well, say well, that. actually, Did... one more, one more question, David. One more question yeah. about the history. Okay. So I was talking about okay. you know the dichotomy of between being blessed and cursed. The other thing I felt like that was a big deal for you guys was the uh, the the extended goal on Skullgirls that if they got to a certain funding level, that they would let you guys use their fighting game engine. And, uh, you know, that I felt like was also a big boon uh, for your team. Massive. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, Knowing what it took to make a fighting game, 
even though we were just a little fan game, we, we started from scratch. We, we went through all kinds of iterations and problems through, throughout development. Uh, during the Skullgirls crowdfunding, we saw people were giving them a little bit of issue with their pricing because they didn't understand how much <laughs> work it takes to animate hand-drawn, frame-by-frame, high-definition characters. Mm -hmm. So like we, we were at pretty active in those comment threads, and we just kind of almost jokingly <laughs> asked if we could use the engine at some point. And Mike was like, you know what? We, if we can hit this goal in our crowdfund, you guys can totally use the engine. And so we were added to their crowdfunding. Oh. And we combined our powers of the fans of our games and pushed it way past that goal. And because of that, we have probably one of the best uh, fighting game engines uh, you can get for like 2D. Uh, 2D style fighter. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, look, we awesome. had Mike Z on here, and he just basically said he's doing this so everybody can play and you know make the games that they want to make. And so, yeah, uh, and shout outs to that guy for. Yeah. I mean, he's he he really is kind of doing this for the greater good, you know. And it's absolutely it's, it's very impressive. It's very impressive. All right, man. Anything else to say about uh, history? Oh. Well, that, I mean, uh, GM, yeah, that, do you yeah. have any more questions oh, about oh, history? Oh. Yeah, I mean, mostly I just kind of wanted to talk about those two points because I wanted to make sure that people who are in watching this were aware of those kind of stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because there have been so many cool facets about that. So if there's anything else, Nappy, that you have that, like, in particular you want to say, you know, maybe give an example of one of the cursed things or just talk about one of the other blessed things, you know, uh, uh, it's up to you what you feel like is a significant part of the history. We'll we'll give you one more significant thing, and then we'll talk about the <laughs> evil online stuff. <laughs> yeah, sure thing. I mean, I can. I think I'll just give the the general encouraging uh, words of no matter what happens, uh, you're going to run into some tough times during development of any project you're really passionate of. But sticking it out and recognizing that. Yeah, opportunities will arise one way or another, no matter how ridiculous the, the situation. T take on those opportunities. Find alternate routes. Like it's, You can reach really, really cool places that way. Okay. And cool, that's man. about all I really have to say on that. <laughs> well, I guess one of those cool places is EVO 2020. Uh, yep. Did you guys find out on the trailer, or did you know about that in advance? Uh, they they had approached us a little bit beforehand. Uh, we don't we don't know much beyond that. Like, okay, all all we knew was that we were being approached, and that the moment we were approached, the first thing that I uh, that I asked anyone, I I wasn't speaking to them personally, but when the news reached the rest of the team, the first thing I asked was, did Skullgirls get in? Because <laughs> I know how much trouble they've, you know, been having getting in. Right. And I, I, it was super important that <laughs> that that kind of storyline wrapped up, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Well, that's, it, it, that's... Just, it would not have felt good getting in before SG, despite all that happened before. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Good man, good man. <laughs> well, how do you feel about the game being at evo online i i'm still uh catching up there it's a whole flood of emotions it, i long since well pretty much since the beginning figured that there was no chance of something like this happening and uh, not in like a, a bad negative kind of way just kind of accepting that this is just a, a sort of niche project in the niche genre and i was perfectly content with a you know a smaller player base Maybe a couple people will check us out if they want to. Hopefully they like it. Like, that's about as, as much as I expected. Mm -hmm. And then when this whole thing happened, it's now we are much further than I ever thought we would be. And I, I'm super excited to, to see so many positive uh, comments coming in. Uh, this, is not, this is nowhere near what I expected. 
uh, just well, as, a, that, that's, as, yeah. as a little side interruption, sorry, uh, kind of continuing on the history thing, uh, hold back to block, uh, Esteban Martinez uh, made a documentary about your history as well. Uh, it was linked in the chat here. I've put yes, it, yes, yes, yes. Really put good. It down here at the bottom right now. Obviously, you'd have to type that in manually. Hope, uh, we'll try to make sure we add it to the description below, and uh, that way you guys yeah, can I'll, just I'll click put it on, on the it YouTube directly. So there you go. Uh, anyway, yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah. Thanks again, Best One. That was that was a fun interview. <laughs> so we, we can make sure everything's nice and casual. What do you think the impact? will be on the game or on the community of it being in EVO Online? Oh, so far it's been great. Uh, as I said, the the response has been wildly positive. Uh, a lot of people are excited to hop in. A lot of our longtime players are excited to see all the new people come in. Uh, a lot of them are having fun <laughs> beating them in, like on, <laughs> on their streams. Uh, yeah. You guys have fun with that. Been uh, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a, a small taste of that. Yeah, it's it, cool. It's it's all been good. Like this community, and I'm sure every developer eventually says something like this. But this community for for our game is honestly one of the most supportive I've I've ever seen. Like it's it's super cool. Uh, you guys were discussing some things earlier. I'm sure you'll get to it. But uh, our community has been running a bunch of tournaments uh, every week ever since we hit early access uh, mm-hmm. two years ago. There are groups for any player level, beginner, intermediate, oh, just cool. top of the line, and we run tournaments for that stuff. Or they run tournaments for that stuff every week. And if there's any hesitation to getting into fighting games, there's some kind of a group you can find within this game that will accommodate you. Like they even run uh, streams. Uh, that teach players the basics and all that stuff. Oh, nice. So there's, 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 there are tools, there are community members, there are groups, everything that you could want to kind of ease into the genre. Not necessarily just our game, but the whole genre. Okay. okay. And and so do you, do you feel that uh, Evo Online will end up increasing the size of the player base? I mean, what what kind of what, what hopes or expectations do you have when it comes to that? Uh, in the past couple days, we've almost, I think we've almost doubled the size of our main Discord channel. And our pl- our concurrent players have, I think, blown past launch. Like, it, it's, wow. everything is way larger than anyone was ready for. But <laughs> thankfully, it seems to be uh, running relatively stable. People are having fun. Uh, a couple issues here and there, but we've been we've been able to keep up, thankfully. Right. So that that's actually an interesting point that a lot of people probably aren't thinking about. You know, this kind of explosion is also probably you know giving you guys weird QA testing on, <laughs> on like oh, matchmaking, sure. lobby like, sizes. Some bugs. <laughs> yeah, there's some bugs we noticed even on uh, even on David's stream. That he yeah. hadn't seen in a very long time, and he ran into them one after another. Uh, yeah, was, it the, was it the Arizona thing? Was it the uh, yeah Arizona thing? There were a couple smaller ones that are not really noticeable unless you've been playing for a while. But okay. we saw them, and we were, I mean, we weren't freaking out for real, but we were like, "Oh, really? We haven't seen <laughs> that one in two years." It was like, "Yeah, it, it, it's been it's been a blow up in every sense of the world, uh, the word." But it's it's been fun. Yeah, but before we went live, you mentioned that this has kind of like upped the schedule for you in some ways, development wise. What's going on oh, with that? For sure. Yeah, so we had a plan that we outlined and we actually put a bunch of it public. Uh, right after we hit 1.0, we had mm-hmm. a list of things we were going to do, including uh, improving aspects of the lobby and uh, spectating and stuff like that. Uh, we had other stuff we were doing for other parts of the game. When the EVO announcement went up, everything now has to go towards the online uh, infrastructure, mm-hmm. including lobbies and spectating, because in whichever way they're going to be running this tournament, we, we don't have any of the specifics on that yet, but the way that they're running the tournament, it, we have to make sure it's as smooth as possible. The GTPO netcode is good and all once you get into the fight, but 
getting from yeah. the main menu to the fight has to be as smooth as possible. Right. Like, you don't want to get into a lobby and then explode or end up somewhere else in the game. Or you don't want to blow up the servers too much and have everyone's position be wrong and all that kind of mm -hmm. weird stuff. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure things are stable leading up to the fight so that people can actually experience all of the GGPO goodness that we've been trying to push for years. So uh, that that's that's what's been pushed forward. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, um oh gosh, I had a question and it left my head. Never mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I was I was wondering whether you have plans to make the same kind of net code changes no, that Mike Z has ask. been doing in Skullgirls? Oh, we are absolutely exploring that for for sure. Like the any improvements to GGPO is super welcome. Uh, even though we've like made a bunch of changes to the engine by now, there's still a lot that conceptually that we can kind of look into and kind of share data that way. Mm -hmm. We have our eyes wide open on that issue. Like this, if there's some way to make the best net code even better, we absolutely want that because having better net code just means you can play more people from further away. Even some of the matches you had earlier that might have felt a little bit muddy would feel zero muddy with his fix. And that's more than worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, with I, I'm, I'm sure the, the sales for the game have hit a spike as well. Um, are you guys thinking, I mean, obviously, again, these are questions that you don't have to answer, but are you guys planning on expanding the team maybe to kind of handle some of the, the growth that you guys are experiencing right now? Uh, that kind of thing is always, we're always open to that. It Everything, just like characters, uh, the ports, all that stuff, it depends on how mm -hmm. exactly those numbers fall. Okay. We, we want to do it. It depends. Okay. All right. Awesome. awesome. Uh, okay, so, you know, you maybe briefly addressed this, but I'm just wondering as sort of a general feeling, how do you feel about the integrity, the importance of online tournaments, and especially when it comes to EVO Online, how do you feel about how that will play out in terms of, you know, integrity of, of being the champion of this game at EVO? Uh, I'm unsure of exactly the methods they're going to be using for something of this scale, but uh, I, I think for the most part, things should be fine. Uh, the, I'm, I'm confident that this this kind of thing can can work out with... I don't know. It's, it's not really a sort of a thing I put very much thought into on mm -hmm. the integrity, like it, whether or not it's it's legit or whether or not it it can work. I, I just I'm just focused on is the game working? Is it is it functioning well? As long as it's functioning well, all of the, the top end stuff and how players perceive the, the, the winners of the tournament, all that will kinda of fall where they do. I I'm just more focused on is it is it a fun experience? Do people like watching it? I think that makes sense, yeah. Uh, yeah. and then a couple of people have asked this in the chat. Any idea how Lauren Faust feels about it being at Evo? Uh, well, this is definitely uh, outside of the the realms that she travels, but yeah, she's yeah. super excited every time uh, she sees anything about the the game kind of getting attention. Uh, <laughs> people make it very clear to to go up to her and and thank her at every uh, step of the way through Twitter and various other means. It's it's a lot of like this is all thanks to her for sure. Like, and she. She's very, uh, very excited for the the progress that we've been able to make so far. Dude, when I started learning the game today, and I figured out the things that Velvet could do, I was like, "How could this be? This is this feels like it's going to be pretty busted. Like, it, like it's too much. <laughs> yeah, like how? Yeah. Like I don't. Know. And then I played against uh, not not even the uh, Husky, the the Town Hall player, but also the the other guy that I played against uh, who played Oleander. Um, it just it like made sense, right? Dude, <laughs> like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. When I was messing with Velvet, and I was like, okay, I can launch a, 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 a like a, a like an ice attack from across the screen, and if it hits him out of the air, it's a it's a knockdown, so I get free. Yeah, all the way to the ground. 
You know, and then, yeah. yeah, you just figure out that every character. And that's one of the interesting things about this game, you know, because, you know, it kind of falls in line. We had Keats on a while ago talking about Killer Instinct. And, you know, it, a lot of people have talked about making fighting games like don't nerf, you know, buff, buff, only buff. And uh, I, I feel like that's kind of the mindset that you guys had with this because obviously characters have been nerfed. I've, I've talked to some of the guys. For sure. There are histories of things being a little too busted, but it sounds like the goal is to keep everybody still so free-flowing that, that, that the players themselves yeah. have a lot of command and can do all sorts of really evil things, right? Yeah, that's where we start. Like, whenever I make a character, I start out at the very, very top and then go a little bit above that in, like, little ways. Mm-hmm. And throw it to the wolves. Just see how <laughs> how disgusting people can can get with this character. Yeah. And the moment it stops being fun for the other player, I kind of take notes on okay. what parts of that were really cool to see and what parts of that were really annoying to see kind of loop over and over right. and over again. Okay. And adjust that way. So I start top down. And I, 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 so far it seems to have made for some... <laughs> Really hilarious moments and, and fun characters. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. I mean, I, 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 you know, uh, oftentimes when we talk about just like character balance, and one of the things that I've always said about fighting games is as a developer, if you know what your character is capable of when you've put them out, then you've probably made a bad fighting game. So, you know, a lot of times <laughs> it's probably pretty exciting and sometimes mortifying to see what your character oh yeah there have been some pleasant surprises for sure yeah (laughs) that's awesome um all right well anything else to talk about you got anything to plug hey just hey give our game a shot you might be surprised at what you find it has has a really cutesy package but there's a real fighting game in there and now we have quite a few testimonials so, By the way, I, I really enjoyed not just the gameplay itself, but I did the salt mine thing, which was, uh, I didn't even know what it was until I started doing it, uh, and that was a lot of fun, and I see, like, there's, like, a real story aspect of it, which is cool. The writing, even just in the tutorial, was really yeah. good. Like, just in the tutorial itself. So Man, I, it, I've, just, I've been impressed yeah. by a lot of it so far. Yeah, one, one thing I want to add is, you know, again, you know, since we're coming to the end of this and you know i i can't it's not me trying to butter you up at this point but you know <laughs> like i really love presentation has is one of the most important aspects of fighting games in my opinion and like i said the graphics pop and everything like that but the decision of what you guys did with the music the dynamic music that mm-hmm. the background stage will change to the character who's like winning is going to make such a big difference for viewers uh, the little tutorials, like I saw, I haven't had a chance to mess with it yet, but, you know, I know you had like the short hop tutorial with Arizona, you know, you guys are yeah, doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys are doing the story mode, you've guys got the practice combos in the training mode, your training mode is super robust and everything like that. Yeah. You guys are doing a lot of what I think is really important for fighting games, for bringing people in and... I know there are some people out there who might not be fans of the aesthetic, you know, going into the game. But my message to those people out there is, you know, look past that. There's a really creative game here and the character designs are fantastic. And I don't know, as I was messing with it, I don't know if you were watching the stream. I know a lot of your dev team was watching the stream uh, when I was messing with the game a little bit. I mean, I was just laughing you know, at, at all these things that I kept finding. And, you know, it's just, it allowed me to exercise a lot of the goofy, you know, combo butt itches that I can do, you know, yeah, like yeah, land yeah, this yeah. move seven times in a combo you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's a really impressive product. You know, every step of the way that I've been keeping track of this, I've been impressed more and more by the things that you guys have done. So... Man, many, many, many thanks. I don't know what to say to that. That's, <laughs> it's everything I could have hoped for. Like Making a fighting game, uh, I always focused on there being a game there, like a whole package, rather than just a blank screen with like a, a versus button on it, right. and then stopping there. I, I always kind of wanted to have a game uh, that had a bit of everything, and I'm glad that you guys found it so uh, fun and 
humorous. <laughs> like just making people smile yeah. is, is a great feeling. Uh, that said, I'm actually not sure, James. What, what did you mean by dynamic music? When I was playing against this Tianho player, there was only one song playing the entire time. <laughs> so the thing about that, uh, there was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, fair. <laughs> nice. Oh man. <laughs> well done. Well, one last question that I have for you, Nappy. Uh, honestly, uh, if you could go back in time and talk to yourself 10 years ago when you first started on this and, you know, like how shocked would, you know, 10 years ago Nappy be at where Them's Fighting Herds is when you were just working on a wall bounce video that got 500,000 views? Ah. <laughs> uh. I don't even know. Man, I, I would of course call myself crazy, but <laughs> then I would look back at the game I started working on in the first place, and I'd be like, oh, you know what? That makes sense, yeah. Nice. Crazy things do happen sometimes. <laughs> cool. Awesome. awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot again for coming on. Appreciate it. It's been nice to talk yeah. with you. Many thanks for having me. Totally. Yeah, all right. Well, and again, just I, just as a summary, you know, everyone give the game a chance, you know, uh, try it out. $15 on Steam right now, if I'm correct. Yeah, $15 on Steam. Uh, we regularly go on sale on uh, Humble Store. All, all kinds of fun stuff. Just okay. check it out. Yeah, cool. absolutely. All right, man. Thanks a lot again. All right. Have a good night. See you. All, All right, right, cool. Well, that was a really nice talk. Uh, shout outs again to Main Six and to, I guess it's Ad Evo. Shout outs to Evo for that as well. Yeah. Uh, good luck for the community, for the game. Something to definitely watch for. And, you know, if like me, you like watching all of the games at Evo, I, I just, the, the biggest reason why I wanted to, to give it a bigger try was I want to understand what I'm seeing when I watch, right? Like, I want to know what it is that I'm going to see when I watch the game at EVO Online. Uh, and lo and behold, I really enjoyed it, right? It wasn't just that I ended up learning a little bit about what to watch for. I, I really liked the game. So. All right, dude. Well, you want to take a break? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we've got some other fighting game stuff to talk about and some 5-5 topics. So, uh, guys, we will be right back.